function. This is a real valued function. And uh, let's say it's a function that's uh, uh, continuous. OK, what do we need? Well, we want it. We want uh, the function to be defined. We want its derivatives to be defined up through the n minus 1th derivative. Okay. So of course, if you have the n minus 1th derivative, you have the previous ones. right? So I don't need to say that. So what we're going to demand is that the n minus 1th derivative, the very last one you need, we're going to demand that this be continuous Okay. on uh, a, B. So I'm demanding that on the, o, on the closed interval A, B, this function has a continuous n minus 1th derivative. And I'm going to demand that the nth derivative exists. I don't need it to be continuous. But I'll demand that it exists on open A, B. Then. Something amazing is true. Uh, first of all, Pn minus 1 is a, is a polynomial, so it, it, it approximates f. That's, that's the message here. Approximates f of x. In fact, it's going to be an excellent polynomial approximation. How excellent? It's going to be this excellent. If you have f of x, it's going to be. Well, I can write it as the polynomial pn minus 1 of x plus an error term. What's that error term, that mysterious error term? I claim this is going to be really quite uh, small. So what's it going to be? Well, it'll be the nth derivative at some mysterious point c. We have no idea what, where that point is, except what that is exactly. But I do know that it will live between where? Take a guess. Yep, A and B. And uh, then, of course, this gets multiplied by x minus A to the nth. OK? So this term looks a lot like the terms of the Taylor, uh, the Taylor polynomial except that the nth derivative is evaluated somewhere in between a and b. OK, Okay. so let's just step back a second. What does this theorem, what does this theorem say in the case that, uh, oh, what does this theorem say in the case that n is um, 1? Can you prove this theorem in the case n equals 1? Yes, what is it? f of, so what's p0? It's just f of a. Good, so we're saying that this function is just, tell me what is going on at f at a, and then add what? f prime at c over 1 factorial times x minus a. Is that true? For some c, by the? Good. This is the mean value theorem when n equals 1. So the first remark is, when n equals 1, this is the mean value theorem. Taylor's theorem is just a generalization of the mean value theorem. OK, uh, let's see. Second comment. I've said it already, but Pn uh, is basically a polynomial. And it's the best polynomial approximation. The best polynomial approximation uh, of order n at a. OK, now what do I mean by best here? Well, what I mean is I've constructed a polynomial that has all the same value and derivatives up to the nth. Same value of f, f prime, f double prime, dot, 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 through f super uh, n at a. Same value of, let's see, the, uh, OK, so I, I mean, 
same value of this and uh, p, p prime, p double prime, p the nth derivative at a. So in other words, these things all correspond. Okay, the first derivative of the polynomial, first derivative of f, actually has, has the same value at a. Let's just convince ourselves of that. Look at this polynomial here. If I uh, look at its value at a, what, is, what happens when I plug in x equals a? Zero, 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 all this is zero. So you just get, ah, at a, this is f of a, right? What happens if I take the first derivative of p? What happens to the f of a term? It, this, this disappears because derivative respect to x is gone, yeah? Now, of course, what happens to this when you take derivative respect to x? Just get that times 1, right? Okay. And then the rest of these, would you agree, have powers of x minus a in them? So when you plug in x equals a, all the, the rest of the terms with their derivatives disappear as well. So the derivative of p is the same as f prime at a. Similarly, you take the second derivative, notice what happens. These things vanish because it only has, it's a linear uh, in x, so it'll vanish when you take two derivatives. This term survives, and the, these terms all vanish because x equals a. Why did this thing, what, can you see why we needed the 2 factorial here? To cancel the powers that come down when you take the derivative twice. If you want the nth derivative to, come, uh, to, to uh, match up, then you need the, n minus, the, the nth factorial underneath, right? OK? So that's really where it comes from. Excellent. OK, so how do we prove this? Take a wild guess. Oh, yeah, OK, induction. Mean value theorem. Yeah, you can definitely do it by induction in the mean value theorem. Uh, I'm actually going to do it uh, slightly differently than the book does. Um, so yeah, the proof, the, the, the book actually has a proof, um, but I'm going to do a, a different proof. Well, this one I actually like better. So would you agree with the following statement? Clearly, well, well Clearly, yeah, do you agree with that? It's all clear. Um, for some number m, would you agree that for some number m, the following must be true? For some number m, check this out, f of b, let's compare that to uh, the value of the Taylor polynomial at b. So f of b is pn of b plus something, right? You can't stop me from writing f of b this way, right? This is the value of f at some point b. It's a number. This is the value of the polynomial at b. That's some number, yeah? OK. Well, um, would you agree that b minus a is also some number? Yes? I'll raise it to the nth power. That's some number. And for some suitable choice of, of, uh, of m, this statement is true. Yes? I didn't say anything with any deep content, right? Number equals number plus something times number. You can solve for something, right? OK. OK. But um, so clearly. For some number m, this is true. I'm going to uh, refer to this um, equation as Cyclops Smiley. OK, so let's look at the following function. Let's look at some function I'll call g of x. OK, now I'm, I'm introducing a variable here. So uh, let's see. I'm going to call a new define a function g of x, which will be f at x, so that's the original function I'm interested in, minus 
the poly 